And I think as we make our way through here, people will see that, you know, this really is a good time to be looking at buying a house. Absolutely. In the, in the rest of these questions that we're going to be covering here, um, you know, these are the things that you need to know in today's market. Yeah, it's, it's a great resource. Yeah. And this is a different market than what it was two, three years ago. Oh, it is definitely not the same. Yeah. So 68% of people currently do own a house right now. That's actually, a, that, that's an encouraging statistic. It is. I thought it had gone lower than that. And, and I think that really shows that there's still some stability out there. Well, you know, I think a big part is people do understand that, the, you know, a home is a financial asset. Correct. And again, I know the, the a couple years, last couple years uh, was a challenging time to get into the market. But now I think most, most of the experts agree we're definitely, you know, at the bottom of that curve. That's right. And, and going up is the way it's going to go. Wow. And I guess the, the key to buying is really knowing knowing what you're getting into. Yeah. Now, knowledge is power, and when it comes to buying a house, as it says right here, knowledge open doors. When you, when you come into a situation and you know what questions to ask, when yeah. you know what to look for, you're not only gonna get a better buy uh, in terms of price, but the features that come with a home. You, you're much less likely to get trapped into something that needs a lot of repair or something like that. Yeah, and the reason why you're on this class today is, you know, Ralph, it's very dangerous when you think you know what to ask, but <laughs> but but you don't. But you don't. That's right. You know enough to be dangerous. That, that's exactly right. Yeah. So um, uh, the the questions that we're talking about here are really designed for that person who's a first time home buyer. Yeah, but I would say even a seasoned pro. You know, even I have to be honest with you. In preparing for this uh, uh, this There's workshop today, you know, you and I have bought and sold dozens of houses and i'd surprised I, I was surprised at how much i i had forgotten yeah. or frankly at how much I, I i never actually knew about this there's yeah. some great great information here yeah absolutely all right so i guess the, the first question is you know how what's the best way how do i begin the process of buying a home well you know the first question you have to ask yourself is should i rent or, or should I own? And we're gonna we're gonna just show you a couple of topics we're gonna be covering here. That's right. And am, am I ready to buy a house? If you decide you you should own, are you ready? And then if you're buying one, well, geez, how much of one can I afford? How much how much payment can I afford? How much space do I need? That that's a big one. Yeah. What area of town that I like? All these are factors that'll affect the price of the home. Uh huh. Great way to, to to get information is to talk to friends and family about what's available. No question. And drive through the neighborhoods. You know, yeah. before you. You, you know, when you're buying a house, you're not just buying a house. This is a real big point, everybody. You're buying a neighborhood. That's exactly right. You're buying all the people in that neighborhood. That's Most people don't think of it in terms. That's in exactly those terms. right. Right. And, you know, even though online is a great resource, I tell you, I still believe in looking in the homes section of the newspaper. If nothing else, that gets you started and gives you a quick overview of the types of things that are available. And, and, and more specific to your particular area. Yes. Okay, so uh, kind of going back up to the top then, how does purchasing a home compare with renting? Well, you know, I think one of the, you know, I mean, just being absolutely objective here, you know, one advantage of renting is generally being free of most of the... There's a lot to be said with walking out, turning the key, and going your way. Th there is, but it also comes at a price because what you're losing is that yeah, you don't have the chance to build equity no question when, when you're renting a home everything that you pay is going in someone else's pocket and said a different way when when you're not buying your own home and renting you're buying someone else's home for them yeah no question about it the other thing is that with the tax benefits and uh you know there there's some new programs coming in we actually have some information on the new tax benefits uh, if you'll uh, look down at the bottom of this screen here we should have a phone number there or contact information you can uh, you can give us a call at the office and we'll share with you some of the uh, the new uh, reports that we have on the new tax benefits and i'll be honest with you what the government's doing here in a good way it, i mean it's shocking it's really remarkable yeah okay now another great uh, benefit of owning your own home is that your landlord's never going to come in and raise your rent that that's for you sure you have your mortgage payment and 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 that's what you're paying in terms of principal and interest yeah now now your taxes and your insurance you know those can change year to year and they will yeah okay but as, as far as what you're paying for the house uh, that's fixed it's not going to be going up on you you know ralph but on this last one this is the one that really spoke to me when we bought our first home is finally we have the i mean sometimes i wasn't sure if i was married to my wife or married to my landlord right do you know what i mean i do i know exactly what you mean and the freedom to not just decorate the home that i want but to live in the home how i want 
in whether we want to have a dog or not, have a cat or not, smoke or not. Or Do you want to paint a room a certain color? Exactly. Do you want to add a ceiling fan? Fix, things like that. Make it ours. Make it your own. But this is where we live. That's correct. Absolutely. All right. So now, at Ralph, we come to the question of how do I know if I'm ready to buy a home? So Correct. we've got some things to t look about here. Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, do you have a steady job or a steady source of income? A, a lot of folks, they have a steady source of income, and really that's the key. You, know, yeah. you, you, you may or may not have the job, but, but if your own situation gives you a steady source of income so that you know you can meet that monthly payment, okay, that, that's a big one right off, the, right off the bat. Yeah. And along with that is you're looking to see is have you been employed on a regular basis now we have on here for the last two to three years but we want you to take note of this of that last part there it says or do you have a good reason that you weren't in other words if you just graduated from school correct or or you know you, maybe somebody just had a baby that's right it's it's okay not to have been in the in the job market a lot of people falsely think that you have to have been working for the last two years and that is absolutely not the case however your job does need to be like a, a W-2 type of a job. So if you're doing a regular paycheck, a regular paycheck, sure, where, where, where like a, they take the taxes out of it, a W-2. That really leads into the next question. Is your current income reliable? Exactly. A W-2 will, will prove to your would-be lender that this is reliable income. Now, you may, uh, you may be an artist. You may, have, you may be your own contractor. You've got a skill. You, you lay tile. You paint. You do something and, and, and you produce your own income. In a situation like that, you know, they're going to look at that differently than the person who just gets a paycheck every month just for showing up, basically. Yeah, that, you know? that's exactly right. And, and on the, if you are self-employed or 1099 uh, employed, something like that, you're going to have to show a track record of the last couple years that this Absolutely. is... Absolutely. Know, and, and they are going to be looking for your full tax returns uh, with, uh, with today's uh, loan programs. That's correct. Now, next thing, uh, do you have a good record of, of paying your bills? I mean, really, if you think of yourself as the lender, would you lend yourself money knowing how you pay bills? See, because the lender wants to know that they're going to put their money out and, and the, the payments are going to be made on a regular basis, just like everybody else. They want the most for the least. See, they want to lend you money, but they want to know you're going to make those payments on time. Yeah, and, and I like the way you said that. Would you lend you money yeah. looking at your situation? And, and that's basically what they're doing. Now, keep in mind, and we have a whole other workshop on this uh, subject, we just want you to know that if if your current past record may not be... Uh, and there may be a good reason that it may not be good. That's right. That's right. And and frankly, with today's economy, a lot of people have been laid off. I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it's not your fault necessarily. That's right. We're going to make that real clear. And we want to let you know that over here, if there's some credit issues or you think you have some credit issues, we absolutely positively have some answers for that. Again, you can uh, scroll down and look at the bottom there, and there's some contact information. And give us a call, and we can give you a great report that's entitled The 10 Myths That the Credit Bureaus Wouldn't Tell You. Right. And, uh, great, great information. Great in information. Report. So we can get that over to you also. Okay. Do you have some credit history? Now, see, paying the bills is one thing. You know, your electric bill, your, your, your cable bill, you know, things like this. Uh, do you have some credit history? Can you show that someone has lent you money and that you've paid it back as agreed? Yeah, because uh, uh, about just as bad as having credit issues is having no credit history whatsoever. Right. Now, again, on here, uh, we, there are some programs where, let's say you don't have a credit card, but... You've been paying rent for the last year. You have a car payment for the last year, maybe paying on your student loans. So there are some programs where they can judge credit based upon those things. Correct. And it's not necessary that you actually have credit cards or something like that. Yeah, by the way, just one other thing on here. Uh, the uh, No credit, by the way, correlates to a credit score. Yes. What, they, what they found is that a person with no credit score behaves the most similar in payment history to a person with a 555 credit score. Which is a challenging credit score. Which is a very challenging credit score. So, yeah, so no credit is actually almost considered, you know, that, that's tough. Challenge. Yeah, yeah, a challenge. Okay, have you saved some money for a down payment? I mean, do you have something to come in uh, and, and put down on the house, or do you have gift funds available to you? Yeah, now keep in mind that this, this particular question does not have to be a yes answer on this one. All right, the others are yes answers. This particular one can be a no because there are some programs uh, that uh, you know some of the you know some of the big banks may not want you to know that there are some hundred percent 
uh, money. 100% financing or, or allow, you know, some gifting from even from family yep. or even from some outside. It doesn't that, have to be family. That, that, that's exactly right. So just know that there are some 100% programs of, uh, available. And again, because of time constraints, we can't go into all the programs here. Uh, just call them the office. And, but just real clear, the 100% programs, they are government programs. It's not one of these buy here, pay here type things. Right, no smoke and mirrors. No smoke and mirrors. It's real 100% financing government programs. Uh, part of the new bailout program so again call the office and we can uh, tell you about those correct and then and then this last one here look do you have the ability to to pay a mortgage every month plus the additional costs I, I mentioned these just a moment ago you're gonna have the taxes the property taxes you're gonna have insurance you may have uh, homeowners association dues there could be you know additional costs that way and just to, just just be honest with yourself and say look do I have this ability is this realistic if it is then you know if, if you can answer these questions properly you're probably ready to go ahead and make a purchase no question and again you can call the office at that number down there and we can uh, we can help you figure this part out correct because some people go okay well how much is enough we can help you with that and again because of time constraints we're, we're not going to be doing that particular math problem today but but if there's a formula we and we can we can help you with it yeah give, so, give us a call five minute phone call yep okay how do i know what i need well Frankly, it's pretty simple. You're going to start out and you just make a list of the priorities here in getting a house. Now, what you actually have is a double list. You make a must-have list and then you make a I'd like to have or a wish yeah. list. Yes. Okay? So a must-have, an example of a must-have would be say, well, it's got to be kind of close to my work. Yeah. Or it has to be close to this school or it needs to be close to the bus line. That's right. Or, some, or we have to have at least two bedrooms. And, and at least two bathrooms, or gosh, we have we have four kids, we need three bedrooms, or, yeah. or things like that. So, so that's part of the must. Now the wish list would be things like, you know, it would be nice if it was a corner lot, or it would be nice if it had a swimming pool. Yeah, fireplace is great. Yeah. But is it is it a necessity? Exactly, and we recommend that before you jump in the car and start looking at houses, is have this wish list, you know, kind of looked at and uh, exactly and and know that what will save you time because when you're speaking to your realtor, they're going to love working with somebody who knows what they want and why they want it. And and frankly, it'll say they can help you target in exactly what you're looking for if you know what you want. If you don't know what you want, they're going to have a hard time showing it to you. That's right. You know. Okay. So, what should you be looking for when deciding on the community? We talked about this a minute ago. When you buy a house, you don't just buy the house; you buy the neighborhood. No question. And then you buy the things that are around the neighborhood. No question. Now, some of the things you're going to want to look at, and these are big. These are, Ralph. I would say when when somebody screws up, this is this is where it happens. This is, yeah, this, this is a common place. This is a, this is a very common place. Is we went to somebody's uh, house not too long ago. They bought into a community. Come to find out, motorcycles weren't allowed in the community. Yeah. And they had a his and her bikes. And they they, they each had bikes. They each had bikes. So they ended up having to spend more money. And store them at a storage place yep. because they didn't look into it. Ding! Additional expense. Exactly. Same thing like if, if you like swimming or if you like tennis or something like that, find a community that fits your daily lifestyle. What are the schools like? Boy, this is a biggie. Yeah. Uh, I know Carl's had this experience. I have too. Uh, we, I had a house that I sold and it was made much easier to sell because it was in a very desirable school zone. Even if you don't have kids. Even if you don't have kids. For the next person when it for comes the, time for to For the resell. next person because they buy with the same thing in mind. Gosh, when I sell it, well, people want this because it's in a in the zone of a school that everybody wants to go to. Yeah. So that that's big. No question. All right. Uh, access to shopping, to public transportation. I mean, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you take a bus to work? Right. Do you take a subway to work? Right. How, how do you get there? Okay? Exactly. Uh, the, the things that are around here, we've got libraries, museums. Um, you know, if you've got somebody who's, who's a student, Yes. Or they have kids who are students. Well, that's yes. helpful if there's a library close, to, close by. Shopping. Uh, do you want to be driving 20 miles to, go to the supermarket? Exactly. You know, these are all, all considerations. Yeah. Hey, museums, <laughs> if you're a history buff, yeah. it might be nice to have a museum close by. And, and I think the important part of doing this particular section here on this slide that we're doing is to be brutally honest with yourself. And of all places not to compromise this is pretty high on my list of not compromising it really is because once once you buy the community once you once you are there so you can you can fix up a house yeah. you can add bedrooms you can add bathrooms but but you can't change your neighbors it's, it's hard to move a house that's exactly right or hard to move someone else's house or someone else's How about that's exactly that? right okay um 
you know, we were, we were talking uh, on a program that we have that actually uh, will show what's nearby a house that you're considering looking at. And, uh, and I mentioned, gosh, this, this, it gives you a walking score. Yes. Well, this has a this this is a low score. I mean, you'd have to have to a car to get around here. Well, you know what? That's perfect. Some people like it that way. That's exactly right. They don't want to be in the middle of the hustle and bustle. They yeah. like it quiet. They like a more rural setting, kind of yeah. a country feel. Um, so that's that's a consideration when you're when you're thinking about your community. Yeah. Now, one of our little secrets that uh, that we strongly recommend that you do is actually go drive around the area that you're looking at. And uh, Ralph, I mean, I, I really do recommend doing this is uh, knock on the doors and talk to the neighbors or if there's a little uh, a park over in the neighborhood, yeah, go or a dog walk or something like that. Check it out, see who's there, see if there's someone there to speak to. You know, just do it in a, you know, in a non-threatening way. Let them know that you're not <laughs> scoping out the area yeah. or anything like that. But just, you know what, I'm considering buying here. Yeah, well, how, how, what's it, it like? Do you like it? Yeah, do you, do you like, like it? it? What is what are some of the pros? What what, let me, what don't you like? Yeah, are the things I should be aware of. Things and, and, like that. And, and we find that when we actually go and do this, that people are pretty responsive. I, I've never had somebody. Let me tell you, if somebody likes their house and the community, they'll like telling you about it. Frankly, if if I knocked on somebody's door and a couple of them door and they and they shut the door in my face, it would let me know exactly what I needed okay, to know. Okay, there, there, there's that's that's some good research that's, right there. That's a good research right there. Now, how can I find out about community resources? Number one, again, give us a call. Our phone number's right there, yep. uh, here at the bottom of the page. Uh, we, we've been here. We're going to be here, so we can help you there. But I tell you, one of the areas that a lot of people overlook today in the digital society is the good old Chamber of Commerce. Yes. So the Chamber of Commerce absolutely positively is a great resource. They're still there, and not only are they there, they've got a website and a bunch of easy resources to look at. Yeah. Okay, so... How do we select the right real estate agent? Let okay. me tell you. Okay, and, and this is assuming that you're not already working with one. Absolutely. And, and so, right. So if you're already if, with one. If you have one, we assume you're with the right one. I, exactly. That's right. So this is going to be for those that haven't picked one out yet. Here's, here's a dirty little secret. If you want to know who the best doctor is in the hospital, go ask the nurses. That's right. Because they're the ones that work with them day in, day out, and they know what to look for. That's right. So if you want to know who a good real estate agent is, uh, call over our office. Trust me, we work with them day in, day out. We can tell you who's nice to work with. And we can tell you who's challenging to work with, who Correct. cares about their clients, and maybe who's doesn't care quite as much. As much. And uh, so that's a big one. Uh, you know, your family and friends have probably already bought places and may very likely have some great insight for you on, on, on who to work with, can make perhaps a specific recommendation for you. Yeah. I worked with, you know, John Brown over at Remax. Oh my gosh, not only was he conscientious, really knew the market well, but his staff was outstanding. Yeah. See? So so that's the kind of thing you're looking for. Yeah. And the other thing I do is is I recommend, you know, getting a list of a couple of agents and just simply calling them up and say, Agent Bob, I'm considering about buying a house in the neighborhood. I'm looking at you and three other agents. Why would I work with you? What is the one reason I would work with you? versus somebody else. Let me tell you, that, that, that sort of sets people back on their heels. Yeah. It, it turns off the all the, the, the salesy hype and things like that because you're telling them right now, you're in the market, you're serious. Yeah. They probably have very, very few people who will call up and admit that they're interviewing realtors because right. they want to buy a house. So That's you will right. set yourself apart immediately. That's right. And the other thing we'd say is meet with a couple agents until you find one that, that you feel you just get a a gut filling for you know right. what I mean you know when you sit and chat with somebody your you know your your little personal radar will come in and say you know what this is a person I can connect with or this frankly is a person that I don't want to spend any time with and you want to know that before you make a commitment to be with them yeah but I, I, again the the best way to do it really we can save you a lot of headache give us a call and, and we'll uh, we'll turn you on one if you're already work, working with one and, and you just want you know kind of between us uh, between us girls? Between us girls, yeah. as you say it sometimes. But just between us, you know, uh, is that somebody that we would recommend? Uh, give us a call, and we'll just, you know, we'll tell you what's been our experience with give that you, person. Give you an honest opinion. If, if, we, ha if we have if one. If we have one, if we know. Yeah. Right. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, Ralph, how can I find out how much homes are selling for in uh, certain uh, neighborhoods and, uh, you know, in communities? I mean, the best way to do this, guys... You just check with the real estate agent. Mm. They are tied in to a whole sea of resources. In fact, many more now than they were two, three, four years ago. Yeah, it's an entirely different ball game. Yeah, there are there are a number of websites that you can go to now and can can quickly 
uh, compare prices on properties yeah. and come to a, a fairly accurate valuation for a house. Yes. And, and just like we said a few minutes ago, it's important that you get with the right agent. We can help you with this. This is why working with a good agent, they know this is what they do day in, day out. And just like you're good at what you do, they're good at what they do. They're your resource for finding out what things are selling for. Absolutely correct. Okay. So should we, should we be looking at an older house or a newer house? Well, and there's some consideration with this. And there's, first of all, we want to tell you, there's no right or wrong yep. answer here. Yes and yes. Exactly. Yep. For me personally, I kind of like an older home because I like the character That's right. of an older home. The, the, the architectural style is, is different on newer homes. Yeah. Uh, and now, there, there, are there some, some, some newer homes that are coolly, cool architecture? Oh, no question. Absolutely. No but question. A lot of times you might look at a house and you'll come along in a neighborhood and go, okay, this was built in the 1970s. Yeah. This was built in the 1950s. This was built in the 1990s. You can tell right away just by looking at it. See, so so, and not that one's better or worse than the other. That's exactly right. A lot yeah. of it comes down to personal preference. Absolutely. Now, uh, so individual characteristics, as we just mentioned, things like the architecture. Now, when I go buy my older homes, uh, one thing I do deal with, though, Ralph, is I am going to have more of a maintenance issue. That's right. I mean, I don't care how you slice it and dice it. My, you know, if, if I buy a house that was built back in the in the fifties, even. Yep. Uh, which is, you know. 60 years ago or so that's right i i personally like the flavor of that but you but know, if it hasn't been updated it, it, it's going to need to be it, it's going to be very expensive so that's again right. this is just a personal preference thing and no right or wrong but just understand if you're buying a, a newer home you're not going to have the maintenance issues in fact if you buy a brand new home it, typically they come with a warranty that's right and i would say the newer homes you know the the codes on building homes aren't getting easier for the builders. Oh no, they're getting tougher. So I can a, tell you that firsthand. So a newer home certainly is going to go through more inspections Correct. than a home even built 10 years ago would have. That's absolutely right. Uh, we mentioned architecture and structure. Definitely a characteristic uh, that, that you're considering when you're, when you're trying to decide what works the best for you. And here's the biggest one of all, energy efficiency. Boy, you know, when, when I get my 1950s house, yeah, my electric bill, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be paying for it. So it's okay for me to want these these things just knowing that they're I'm gonna be paying a price for it that's right and you have to decide whether you're willing to pay a price or not the codes are different the insulation is different if you have an old uh, air conditioning and heating system uh, it's gonna be less efficient and much more costly to operate so Ralph when we're looking around for a home you know what are some things and, and this is a good thing to make a list of these things we're getting ready to give you here guys what are some things they should look for when they're walking through a home all right well right off the bat you're, you're talking about the size of the home is there enough room in the home both for the present and the future, both for now and later. You yeah. say, well, why does that matter? Okay, well, it, what's your age? Uh, do you have kids now? Are you going to be adding to your family? Or, or are kids going to be moving away and you're not going to need as much room in the next that's couple exactly years? That's exactly right. So you, you, know, you, you might look at, at getting into a house that's going to be a, you know, maybe it's a little tighter now, but that's going to be for a, a shorter time period and, th and then it will fit better. Yeah. Okay. Are there enough bedrooms and bathrooms? Well, who, how many people are going to be living there? Yeah. So you can decide that and, fairly and, easily. And, and, and at the risk of having something thrown at me, do you have a house full of girls or a house full of boys when deciding the bathrooms? That's exactly right. Because if you've got five teenage girls, they're going to be a little bit more makeup time, hopefully, than the five teenage boys. Right. And even my pets are girls. <laughs> even yeah. I, every, everybody's girls in my house except yeah. me. Okay structurally sound and uh, and this is a big you want to look at you'll you know check the foundation certain parts of the country are uh, where, where the, the 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 ground goes through a lot of uh, expanding and contracting and in between the rainy season and the dry season you have you know certain parts are, are real prone to sinkholes yeah no question those just wreak havoc on houses for obvious reasons yeah even and small ones even small ones uh, but again you know a newer home is going to be a little safer play Correct. Than an older home on, on this one. That's right. Okay. Uh, I mentioned a minute ago the, the, the mechanical systems. Your 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 first your electric. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it is it current? Is it a modern electric system or is it something that's still back on fuses? If it's on fuses, that's going to need to be looked at. Your mechanical system, the air conditioning, heating. Okay. Now one thing on this particular item, we have a great report. And again, because we're trying to keep this under uh, uh, sixty minutes for everybody's convenience. We have a great report. We have a list of questions that you must ask your home inspector. Yes. Or, or you could. Re this is a, another biggie, guys. You, you, you have to get a home inspector, but you have to know what to ask your home inspector. If you want the report, 
Uh, call just, the number that's, that's yeah. right down below. The, yeah, the, just give us a call. I'm telling you, if, if you do nothing else, call and get that report. It's the home inspector must know questions report. Absolutely. And, uh, and we'll get that right over to you. And again, it's just our gift to you. Okay, good. Um, is the yard big enough? Good question. Usually this comes in if you have kids, you want room for them to play. Do you have pets? You know, what do you need there? Are you going to yep. put in a swing set? You know, things like that. Um, well, there you go. Do you like the floor plan? You got to like the looks of the house. And you'll, you'll know that. I'm telling you, when you walk in the house, yeah. it'll, it'll speak to you or it won't. Now, if you already have a house full of furniture, it'd sure be nice if your furniture happens to fix, it, you know, to fit that house. Correct. Not that I would, that would be my final judgment, but it's certainly something to continue. Um, storage space. Can you have too much? <laughs> my wife says no. Okay. If you walk into a place, I mean, do, do you have any closets? Yeah. If there's no closets at all, I mean, that's going to be something to, to really, uh, you need to contend with. Um, does anything need to be repaired or replaced? Boy, and if you're going to negotiate, guys, this is a great area to negotiate this come, on. This comes back to that inspection. You, you really need to get that inspection report. When you say anything, when you're buying a house, anything is a big list. Yeah. It could be anything from siding to roofing to flooring to, to mechanical systems. I mean, yeah. there's, there's, a whole, there's a whole gambit there. Now, ideally, you want the seller to repair or replace these items. And in today's market, you can make a lot of requests about this, and they'll come through. It's a good time in the market to be asking for that stuff. It is, but keep in mind, if it's a bank-owned property, or if you have a, a, a seller that's upside down, and maybe they're, uh, they're, I don't know, they don't care anymore. Is, that's is right. Is it okay to say that? Well, you, so, well so, you can. Yeah, somebody that's maybe caught between a rock and a hard spot. It's going to be tougher to get them to pony up money. It, virtually impossible. It, it, exactly right. So just kind of keep that in mind. Again, your agent would be a good person to bounce us off of. Correct. Okay, um, I love this. It takes a little little creativity here, but you imagine that house in good weather, in bad weather, and in each season. In other words, if um, you know, if if you're in a you, you look to see, like if it rains, is this house at the at the bottom of a hill? And gee, it seems like everybody's drainage tends to run into my yard. It's coming into my yard. Do I have a steep driveway and do I live in an area where, you know, where if it freezes or rains or snows, that could be difficult to, to navigate? Right. Or is it on a located on a hill that when it rains, the mud comes down on the driveway and, and creates an obstacle? I had a house like that one time. Yeah. And uh, so that's definitely something to look at. Uh, and, and that really comes into the next question. Will you be happy with it year round? Yeah. Will you be happy with it? Is it a great summer place, but the insulation is poor and, yeah. and in the wintertime it's going to be too cold? Yeah. Okay, number 10 here is how long will I be living in this home? A lot of people miss, miss over this one too, Ralph. That's right. And, and really what that comes down to is, is kind of what phase are you in life? Did you, you just get out of school? Yeah, because if you just got out of school, you can compromise a little bit on the space, you know, unless you plan on having kids right off the bat. You might have three, four years in between kids, and again, everybody's going to be different. That's right. Now, if you have an early family, you'll have a different set of goals and things you're looking for in a house than, well, frankly, if you just got out of school, and, or if you're an empty nester. If you're an empty nester. Because if you're an empty, like let's, let's say if you're if you have an early family, you're going to need a little bit more space as they grow up a little bit. Yeah. I mean, they're going to teenagers are definitely going to need a little bit more elbow room than than a room full of six-year-olds so that's to speak. exactly right and then on empty nesters same thing you might it, it it's it would be okay to be pinched for space for a little bit knowing that um you know if you're getting ready to be an empty nester right here in a year or two you might could go with a little bit less space or a little bit smaller of a yard because they're, they're going to be going off you know and having their own family soon exactly that's exactly right okay so uh, Next thing, how can we keep track of all the homes you see? And you definitely want to be looking at a number of homes. Okay, here's what we recommend that you do. This is a, this is, Ralph, you're the one that taught me this one. This is a great trick. Yeah. What you do is go pick up a, uh, a binder, right? Like at Office Depot. Absolutely. Something like that, right? Like a three ring binder, notebook. Yeah. yeah. And what we want you to do is we want you to take uh, pictures of the house and, and literally, we recommend even with the digital camera when you get home print them out and put them in this book it's a lot easier to evaluate homes when you're looking through this three ring binder and you're seeing all the pictures at once versus scrolling through them on your camera and when you print them up typically it's a little bit bigger than the little screen that you're looking at on your camera too it, it, it's easier to see you can make notes 
and 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 so you can really you can compare it much more easily. Yeah, oh, and and you make a good point. So when you print out the pictures, you're absolutely right, Ralph. You can write, you can jot in notes and everything. Yeah, you know. Now some it. people will travel with a notebook or something and sit and, and and make notes about the house, but there's nothing like seeing that picture to jog your memory. Well, Ralph, here comes a real big one. Is I mean, how many homes should somebody look at before choosing one? <laughs> well, it says right here, visit as many as you want. There is no maximum. Uh, I got a buddy who's a realtor, and one of the things he does, when he'll, he'll sit down, he'll make a list of the things you want. He will go on a tour with you, and he'll show you 25 houses in a day. Yeah. I mean, he will run around, and by the, you'll get used to you go, oh, oh, this is one of those houses where you walk in, the living room's to the left, the family room is back to the right, the bedrooms are, you know, you get these in your mind. Yes. And, and then you can very quickly compare the features that each home has. Now, a key when you do this is communicate with your real estate agent about what you like or don't like. It's very important, guys, as you're going out looking for houses, you know, sometimes we hear people saying, well, I didn't want to hurt their feelings. Look, it's not, even if it's their, even if it's their listing, it's not their own personal house. I mean, it might be, but most time it's not their own personal house. Here's a piece of advice. Yeah. Hurt their feelings. Hurt the, yeah. <laughs> no, no. You don't have to think of ways to hurt their feelings, yeah. but don't be afraid to, to say what's on your mind. Yeah. It's, listen, this is all about you. Yes. It is not about them. That's right. Okay. Totally. Communication is key. And then with that binder that you're talking about, Ralph, and keeping yes. those notes, stay organized when you're doing your look with your search. But I'm gonna tell you right now, let me tell you another mistake I see people make. They'll go out the first day and they'll find a house they love and then they keep looking. And it's like, well, you know, sometimes it is gonna be the first house you see. That's correct. And and if the house is exactly what you're looking for and the price seems about right. Well, guess what? You didn't have to go look at 100 houses. That's right. So don't feel like you need to go look at 100. You might make a list of the houses that have the characteristics that you want in that area. Say there's 10 of them. My wife and I had this very experience. We looked at the first house and went, you know, that's a good candidate. The next one we looked at, we went, I, I don't think so. The next one, nope, I don't think so. It turns out that it was the first house, but we simply compared it to each house and what we've done before in, in a similar process on a different property. If, 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 the, if another house comes up better, now that's the house to beat. Yes. So you just work with the house to beat, okay? Yes. Okay, I found a home. What types of inspections are required? All right, well, let's talk about that for a minute. Uh, first of all, you know, always get a home inspection first. And again, we have a list, and, and maybe we should have said this before. We have a list here in our office where we have a list of home inspectors. Yep. We have a list of termite inspectors. Yes. And these are all people that we know of. We've seen their work. And again, if you want to know who a good doctor is, ask the nurses. Ask the nurses. We, we want you to think of us as, uh, as know, the nurses. As, as the nurses, so to speak, <laughs> you know, in this aspect. But in answering this question, there's a couple things you need to have done. Number one, uh, there's, and in, 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 again, it's, this is going to depend upon different areas. Uh, but uh, you'll need things like radon gas or maybe asbestos. Uh -huh. uh, if there, if the property has a well on it, you'll need to have the uh, the pump needs to be inspected. That needs to be inspected. And, and the holding tank. Correct. A termite inspection, uh, again, depending upon the area, is certainly recommended. If the house was built prior to 1978, and especially if you have kids under the age of seven, you're definitely going to want to have an inspection for lead-based lead, paint. Lead-based paint, yeah. uh, electrical inspection. Now see, several of these come under, if you get a good home inspector, these items will be part of that inspection. A roof inspection. Yeah, exactly. Gosh, that's a big one. Yeah. Um, so, it, so a good person to start with on this is a home inspector. Again, give us a call and uh, we can turn you on to the home inspectors that we recommend and they'll tell you what other things of the house that needs to be inspected. And frequently, you know, the home inspector will not be the same you know, if you need to have the well inspected, that might be a, a specialty inspector. That could be a specialty person. But that's but, exactly but, right. But they'll lead you in the right directions about that. Okay, so uh, we talked about home inspectors. What do they do, and how does an inspector figure in the purchase of a home? Well, first of all, is you're going to check for the safety of a home. So yeah. a, a home inspector isn't going to just be, you know, seeing if there's cracks or, you know, something broke or termites or something. They're, they're going to look at the safety of the home, too. Right. Is this a safe place for you and your family to live based on a, a list of yeah. things that they look it, at? You know, keep in mind, when you see that big old wire coming in the house, I mean, there's some major electric activity going on in a house, and uh, people can get hurt. So you yeah. want to make sure. So, it's, so we don't want you to think of this as, well, I don't have any kids, so that's not so much of a factor. No, it's a factor. It's a factor. It's a factor. Yeah, absolutely. 
the other thing is the home inspector, they're going to focus on, you know, the structure, the constructions, and the mechanical. And we're talking about mechanical, you know, sometimes we're talking about like the, uh, like the air conditioner. Right. You know, and the plumbing. Uh-huh. And also with the, uh, with the appliances. Correct. Uh, now, they'll make you aware of what repairs are then needed. They'll come along and, and often they'll say, okay, you know, in the life of a roof, for instance, often they'll say, okay, generally that's a 15 year. Okay. Yes. This thing was put on five years ago. You've got another 10 good years on this roof. Or they might yeah. go, you know what? You're going to need to replace this roof within the next 24 months. Exactly. Well, that's something to plan on because, you know, they, they cost money. Now, you bring up a good point there, Ralph, is what, a, what an inspector doesn't do is they do not evaluate whether or not you're getting a good value for the property. That's right. Yeah. So this is not the person to ask. Uh, gee, do you think we're getting a good price on this home? Am I paying too much for yeah. this? Or am I getting a steal? They don't know. Right. This is a thing that you know we can help you with here at our office. Uh, your real estate agent certainly would be the first place that I would stop at that. Correct. And uh, But what they can do is they can tell you how much the repairs would, you know, w w what's an estimate of the repairs that they would yeah, cost? What's it, what's it likely to cost you to, to, yeah. to put this in working condition or if you need to repair it? Okay. Again, uh, if you're looking for a qualified or an experienced inspector, again, we can help you with that. Yeah, Our number's right at the bottom of the screen. Just, yeah. just give us a jingle. Don't, don't use the yellow pages for this one, guys. No, honestly, don't. Yeah. You'll save a lot of time. Yeah. Um, now, before you sign the final offer, you want to make sure to have an inspection clause. Well, what's an inspection clause, Ralph? An inspection clause is, a, is a, a clause. It's a little sentence or paragraph within your contract that, that allows you X number of days, typically, yeah. uh, or, or weeks, uh, in which to complete an inspection and to bring up any issues that are found in that inspection. Exactly. Now, one of the, and again, this is your, your real estate agent is the one that'll help you with this. But uh, just as an example, the clause might say something like, uh, and again, we're not attorneys or we're not acting as a real estate agent here. We're just giving you an example here. Exactly. So that was my little disclaimer. Very good. Uh, but an example of one might be, this contract is contingent upon buyer's approval of home inspection yes. performed by home inspector of buyer's choice. Let That's me, right. Let me say that again. This contract is contingent upon buyer's approval of home inspection performed by home inspector of buyer's choice. In other words... Let, let, let me put that in English for okay. you. What that means is you're, you'd like to buy this house, um, but you get to choose a home inspector and the, the, the contract, the validity of the contract is contingent upon your approval of the findings of that inspector, the inspector you chose. Yes. It's not a matter of the seller going, oh, well, okay, but you have to use my inspector. No. No, 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 look. It's your inspector. Yeah. You're going to tilt this in your favor. Everything is going to be in, so, so that there's nothing hidden. Any possible thing that can happen works to your benefit this way. All right, what about this question, Ralph? So uh, the seller says, oh, that's good. We've already done a home inspection. Here it is. Uh, you could say, well, thank you very much. Yeah. I'll be happy to look at that, but I'm still going to have my own inspector do very it. Very good. In fact, what, uh, what, you told, what you've told me in the past to do, Ralph, is actually get their old inspection that they have, or, or their new inspector they have with their inspector, right. and give that to my inspector. Give it to the inspector. Because uh, maybe, maybe their inspector actually caught something that mine Correct. maybe not wouldn't, you know, That's right. for instance. Yep. Okay. Now, do, does somebody need to be there for the, uh, the inspection? You know, frankly, I would recommend that you do. Yeah. I would recommend that you be there. And the reason for that is that when your inspector is looking at the different parts of the, of the home, if he's inspecting mechanical, he may need to see things operate. Yes. For instance, I've got a guy that <laughs> when he does the sprinkler system, he'll have you turn on the sprinkler system. He will stand in the yard in a rain suit and watch where the spray goes. And he figures the best way to see that and make sure there's coverage is to stand right there in it and see where it sprays. Very go, good. You know what? That's impressive. That's my kind of home inspector. Exactly. Now, so it's, it's certainly not required. It's a good idea. If nothing else, be there for sure for the last 15 minutes of the inspection. Yes. Because then the inspector, he or she, will walk you around the property and point out the things that they found. Exactly. So certainly at least the last few minutes of the inspection. Okay. What are home warranties? Boy, this is a biggie. And should you consider them? Yes. Uh, yes, you should consider them. Go ahead. Because they offer protection for the possibility of costly problems. So a home warranty is where typically things like the air conditioner, 
maybe the appliances. A well and pump. Well, electrical system. Electrical, yep. Are actually warranted. And uh, so I, the, I have seen these be a savior, Ralph. And, and whether the, um, you know, whether the, uh, the, the seller helps pay for it or not, uh, this is definitely something I would consider, and I would, I would ask my real estate agent about this particular item. Typically, the cost of a warranty like this uh, is, is going to be less than the first repair you get on something that goes bad. Yeah. And yeah. so if, the, if there's any age to the appliances or the roof or the well or the, or the things that we're talking about here, um, it's always a good idea to do it. And very often you can get the seller to, to pay some or, or all of the cost of the warranty. Yeah. And, uh, and there are some great warranty programs available. Again, uh, you can call us at the office or contact the real estate agent and they'll help you with that. And then the other thing is, Ralph, consider having the seller uh, or, or the agent sometimes. Sometimes the agent will chip in for will, it as well. Will chip in and help pay for these too. So, Absolutely. Uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind, if you just bought the house, you might be a little cash strapped for the first month or two, and then suddenly the air conditioner goes out. Not that it's anybody's fault. They just... That's right. They're things, gonna break, ha things happen. Things happen. You know, uh, when it happens the first couple months, might make it a little bit, a uh, little rough. Okay. So where can we find information on the property tax liability? Well, it should be included in on the listing, and they'll have how much the, ta the, uh, the taxes are on the property. Of course, the other thing you could do is... You just ask the seller. That's exactly right. They'll talk about They're going to know that they've been the ones who are paying the taxes on yeah. it. Yeah. And then, of course, you can just check with the local tax assessor's office, and uh, that's either you can make a phone call, go there in person, or they're right online. Or go online. Just go yeah. to their website. And again, we can help you with that. So uh, just call our office, and we can help you with that. Okay. Do I really need homeowner's insurance? And if so, how can I get the lowest rate? Um, okay, in one quick word. Yeah. 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 You need it. It's a requirement. And even if it wasn't. It, even if it's not a requirement, you need it. Yeah. Okay. Now, the lender will require it because uh, they're not going to lend a hundred or two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars on a house. Or ten thousand. Or ten thousand dollars on a house and have it burned down and have you go, oops. Yeah, that's exactly uh, uh, right. Gosh, I, I don't have the money. Yeah, see? absolutely. So, so the, right off the bat, it's going to be a requirement. Now, as far as getting the, uh, a good rate, uh, you, can, you can shop around for comparable rates. Uh, frankly, uh, you, you call over here at our office. Well, we'll tell you, because again, you know, we, we work with insurance agents. That's what we do all day long. Right. And uh, so we're happy to share with you the ones that we found that not only have a good rate, uh, but will actually be there you know yeah. if you need it and and there's there's wide uh there, there's a wide range there's a big difference in what you'll pay in premium in certain yeah. parts of the country yeah no question about it now one thing you want to make sure is uh is see if you're in a flood zone yes and and you might be thinking geez there's no way we're in a flood zone here i tell you i've seen some surprising places right that that are in an area of a flood zone that you would have never thought it was correct so this is definitely a question that you uh that you want to ask now, another insider secret is to use the same insurance company that you're using for your car insurance, for your life insurance, because often, they, often they'll give you a multi-policy discount. Yeah, exactly. So, so you'll get a better rate uh, with, a, with a, a given company because they're also insuring your car than a person who didn't have their car insured with them. Yeah. Okay, Ralph, so they've been out looking for houses and they go, gee, uh, I'm ready to make an offer. How do I determine the initial offer what do i do okay well here here's some things that your offer should include now we're going to put a list here up but this is again uh something that you know your real estate agent they're going to help you with but i would still write these things down just you know just as a as a check sheet it, it, and it's good for you to write them because when you talk to your realtor if you're the one bringing them up yeah frankly that will be impressive to them that's right they'll know they need to pay a little bit more attention or you know that's right yeah no, no so harm some, some things here the complete legal description of the property that's not yeah. the address it's not the same as the address that's right that's a description in the in the public record which points to this house and only this house yeah okay the other thing would be the amount of earnest money. We also call this good faith money. Good faith money. That's just money that's turned in with the offer, which helps to, to, to let the seller know that you're serious about this, this offer and like, this purchase. Like a deposit. Like a deposit. Yeah. Somebody who makes an offer and, and, and puts $100 with it is not as impressive to a person who makes an offer and puts five or $10,000 with it. Right. But again, this is going to be an area that your real estate agent will, will, will help, advise you. Will advise you on that particular Correct. one. Second, the next thing you'd want to have. Now, your down payment, that's not the same as your earnest money deposit. 
your down payment is frankly that's that's what your lender is going to require for the certain for for the program that you're using. So if it's a five percent down, you get ninety five percent financing. If it's if it's a hundred percent financing, if it's if it's ninety, if it's eighty percent financing, the down payment is the portion that you didn't finance. So um, so just to make it clear, let's say you're putting five percent down. Let's just for some easy math. Yeah. You're you're buying a, a hundred thousand dollar house. Hundred thousand dollar house. And you're putting five thousand dollars as your as your down payment. payment. But you already put down a thousand dollars with the offer, with the, as earnest money. Right at closing, you're you going to bring another four thousand dollars. That's right, and you're financing ninety-five thousand dollars. That's exactly in right. This example. That's exactly right. The other thing that you're going to want to make sure that's in with your contract is you're going to tell them what day you want to move in. Yeah, don't assume that. Gee, well, the day I buy this house is the day I can move in. Because what if the seller needs a day, a week, an hour, a month? Or whatever, for, for whatever reason, to move out. That's exactly right. What if there is you 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 could have a situation on a brand new house where for whatever reason there's a closing on a given day. These are less usual, but uh, maybe the flooring will go in the next day, and that's taken care of in the contract. Yes. So you, so it spells out that you've got the house, you've got the contract, but you're the 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 seller who's maybe a builder says, okay, but you're going to move in two days afterwards because that's going to give us time to get the floor done. That's exactly right. So it could be anything like that. Absolutely. And of course how much money you're offering for the home that's exactly the price right. that you're offering obviously that has to be very clearly uh, laid out in your offer the proposed closing date which again you need to clarify to make sure that that in the proposed move-in date either they're the same or if they're not just you need that everybody knows that, that they're not that they're exactly that's right here's a biggie the length of the time the offer is valid what do we mean by that Ralph here's what it means you know when you make an offer very rarely now does somebody make an offer now that's just open-ended and you have as long as you want to think about it. In other words, you you made an offer to the seller. Mr. Seller, I'm willing to buy your house at this price. I want to close on this date and blah, blah, blah. And by the way, this offer is good until tomorrow uh, on this date at 5 o'clock p.m. In other words, you're going to give them a, a reasonably short period of time right. to make their decision. That's right. It, it's, a, it's a good offer. We're serious about it, and we need to know if you'll entertain it, and we don't want you taking three, four, five days to think about it. And, and here's why you, don't, you typically, and, and again, your real estate agent can help you with this, but you typically don't want to give the seller an open-ended offer because then you're tied up until he gives you a decision, and he can take your offer and shop it around to different buyers saying, I've got this price. Can somebody beat it? That's right. So that's what you don't want to happen. Yeah. So we recommend as short of a time Just, as possible. I've seen them 24 hours. I've seen them in the morning, and you need to answer this afternoon by 5 o'clock. Now, keep in mind, again, if the seller is out of the area or, or if or it's indisposed somehow or yeah. bank-owned property, again, this is something to ask your real estate agent because each one's going to be a little different. Correct. And, of course, details of the deal. Details would be things like, does that big mirror in the bedroom, does that stay? Or the, the, the built-in, it looks like a built-in entertainment center. Right. Is it really built-in or, or is that going? Or is that going? Do I get the hot tub? Yeah, exactly. Things like that. Okay? So the, the thing is you just need to be prepared for some give and take on the negotiation. Yeah. Now, on the negotiation, we have a great report on how to negotiate. And, uh, guys, you have got to get a copy of this report. Again, time doesn't permit us. Uh, to uh, to go over here. Can't go into it, but our number's right down at the bottom. Give us a call. And we'll give you this free we'll report on this negotiation. And and frankly, Ralph, I have to tell you, I found that negotiation one is good when I'm dealing with my kids too, by the way. <laughs> Trust me, we're negotiating all the time. Even when you're not buying a house from them. Even when not buying. Now, do I need a lawyer to buy a home? Now, some states require a uh, an attorney to close. to close, and some don't. And uh, so what we're going to tell you to do is, frankly, just check the laws here in our state yeah. and at the time, you know, and, and make sure that, uh, that um, see, see it, how it applies to you. See how it applies. Sure. It, but what, what I would say is check with your real estate agent uh, for requirements and referrals. I mean, that's really the biggest thing that I would tell you guys is, uh, is ask your real estate agent. Certainly, we would never tell you not to get one. Absolutely. And so uh, check with your real estate agent. Maybe ask some of your friends. And uh, and then that way you can you know just just know that it's an option and it's certainly an option worthy of a look. Absolutely. Okay, so um, so now you're ready to apply for your mortgage, perhaps at this time. Correct. So Ralph, this would be a good time for him to uh, call the office. Give us a call and let's get started with the process. And we'll walk you through the uh, the we'll walk you through the uh, the process 
of uh, getting pre-approved and we're going to show you the difference between pre-approval and a, a pre-qualification pre qualification yeah two different things two different things so uh so we need to make sure what you have is exactly what you need correct so what we want you to do right now is um is call the office for three reasons number one to get you pre-approved yes that way there's no surprises the reason you need to get pre-approved now is your offer is going to be a lot stronger when it's included in with our letter of approval if you submit an approval to the seller letting them know that your your financing is already arranged and that the bank is 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 willing to close as soon as they find a house that's a very powerful thing in today's oh my market gosh. especially in today's market especially today so number one we want to get you ready for that number two we want to get that home inspector that the the questions you must ask your home inspector to avoid getting ripped off in uh, in today's market yes and, and then the third thing is is that report on negotiating you got to have that you want that and you want it before you do the negotiation. Yeah. And again, we're not selling these things to you. We're going to give them to you. Oh, that's right. This is not a. This, yeah. That's not sales. That's yeah. just that's helpful information to help you in your transaction. No matter what you're doing. No matter so, what. So there's our contact information uh, right down there. So uh, give us a call if the uh, if the phone lines are busy uh, after these uh, after these calls. Sometimes just, the phone line just gets try busy. Back in a couple minutes. Yeah. Keep keep calling. This information is way too important for you not to have it and it's yours for the asking it's our gift to you absolutely and you uh and i don't care what what stage in the game you are you're in you need to have these three things yes so uh we sure appreciate your time on today's call yeah thanks for being with us and uh and plug this stuff in and really put it to use now as you as you decide what to do about buying your home yeah any further questions at this point uh just simply call the office again and uh we've got these reports we're ready for your call and we'll talk to you when you call in thank you ralph one more thing, we have some other uh, of these online workshops that we do on other yes. subjects. Give us a call at the office, and we can give you a schedule of those also. Absolutely. All right. Thanks again, guys. Thanks and a lot. Look forward to talking with you. Best to you.